Thank you very much. Well, this uh, forced me to try and keep you awake for the last talk of, of this evening. Um, so coming to Huddersfield, I feel as though it's, uh, Yorkshire's a bit of my spiritual home. I don't know how well this goes down to an audience in Huddersfield, but I've been a Leeds United supporter before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the next few minutes, I want to exercise your brains a bit and tell you about what is actually a very exciting area of, of uh, research. Um, I'm a physicist, I'm a quantum physicist, and, I, and one of the, the problems is that most people think that quantum physicists are very, very clever. At least of all the quantum physicists themselves. I, I got a, a tweet today from someone, no, no idea who he was, asking me the following question. What do you as a quantum physicist think about capitalism? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's there and it's good and it's bad at the same time. I don't um, so, quantum physics is weird. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you in the audience don't, aren't that familiar with quantum mechanics. So I'll just say something about that and then say why, what, what is this new era of research. So, the um, Nobel Prize of Physics was uh, announced yesterday to two men who led research teams, one in France, the Ecole Normale in Paris, and one in Boulder, Colorado. And those research teams, over the last decade or, or two, have carried out experiments that show just how weird the world of atoms and the particles that make up atoms really are. A lot of people will have heard of you know, something about atoms being in two places at once. Or isn't there something about Schrodinger's cat being in the box and it's dead and alive at the same time? And it all sounds like a bunch of boffins have made stuff up. And, and actually, you know, in the real world, not, nothing like that really happens. Well, the Nobel Prize in Physics were awarded for experiments that do confirm the very weirdest aspects of quantum mechanics. You see, Mechanics, the word mechanics, is because it contrasts with what physicists call Newtonian mechanics, which is the way objects move in the everyday world, the way uh, balls, real or imaginary, are thrown around, and how, and how uh, what path they follow through the air. That's what Isaac Newton and others around that time were figuring out, the laws of motion, the law of gravity, how all the stuff around us behaves. But down at the level of atoms and molecules and the particles that make up the atoms and the particles that make up the particles that make up the atoms, the world is very, very different. And it, it was figured out in the 1920s that a new science had to be developed. And it started off as a, a theory, as mathematics. Yes, it answered certain questions about experiments that, that scientists couldn't understand, but it gradually grew in terms of how powerful it turned out to be. You see, quantum mechanics explains how electrons orbit around in an atom. Now we learn at school that the atom is, this, everything's made of atoms, um, at the, in the centre there's a tiny nucleus, and around it are these even tinier electrons buzzing around. And scientists first thought that the atom was like a miniature solar system, where the nucleus is the sun and the electrons are the planets. But then it turned out that idea wouldn't work, because the nucleus of the atom has positive electric charge, and the electrons have negative electric charge, and light charges attract each other. So how were these electrons buzzing around in atoms and staying stable out there without falling in. Quantum mechanics explained this. Quantum mechanics explained how the electrons order themselves around atoms. It also explained how atoms fit together to make molecules. Quantum mechanics turned out not just to be the foundation of so much of physics, but the foundation of so much of chemistry. Now, in terms of sort of a... I don't want to make it sound like a hierarchy of science, but physics on the whole deals with fundamental laws of nature, which helps explain chemistry, and chemistry underpins biology. After all, biology, life, 
all of us are made of cells that down deep at the molecular level, we're just chemistry. It doesn't sound very romantic, but ultimately we're made of the same stuff as everything else in the universe, just arranged in a very, very special way. So you might think it's natural that if physics, quantum mechanics underpins chemistry, which underpins biology, then life itself should ultimately need quantum mechanics to explain it. Well, no one has thought so until recently. I should say there are different kinds of weirdness associated with quantum mechanics. There's the basic idea that quantum mechanics gives us the rules that tell us how atoms and molecules fit together. At the other end, there is very weird stuff. Literally an atom being in two places at once. Literally an electron spinning both clockwise and anti-clockwise at the same time. You think, well, hang on, it can't. It's impossible. It can't do both. It'll grind to a halt. But that's because we, we're not able to imagine how an electron really spins. But it does do that. And we can do experiments to... I mean, okay, you have to take my word for it. I can't, can't, can't do the experiment yet. But that, that's what they do. You can do design experiments where it does look like the atom is going two directions at once. And if it didn't do that two directions at once, the results of the experiment that we set up would, behave, would be very different. So we can confirm these things happen. But it does seem to be constrained down to the level of atoms. You don't see objects in the everyday world behaving in that strange way. Then you have things where subatomic particles, quantum particles, can be very, very far apart, and yet somehow still influence each other, however far apart they are. Something called entanglement. <coughs> And that's essentially what the Nobel Prize of Physics was awarded for this year, quantum entanglement. The weirdness of quantum mechanics has led some people who don't understand it to suggest that it can explain all sorts of other weird phenomena. I get my fair share of crank letters and emails from people Usually it's just, you know, I've, just, I've got the, a new theory of the universe and I've proved Einstein wrong with nothing more than GCSE maths. Here's my report. And it goes in a folder of the box file. Cranks. <laughs> and, um, but, but, you know, people have said, you know, quantum mechanics is weird, it can explain telepathy um, because of this entanglement, because of this action at a distance. Quantum mechanics can explain, explain, explain paranormal phenomena. That's not given much credibility at all in the scientific community. But some aspects have. I, in the late 80s, I think it was, two physicists, well, well one of them was a physicist, um, Roger Penrose. In fact, Roger Penrose is a long-term collaborator of Stephen Hawking's. Um, uh, and, um, and Hameroff, two um, scientists, suggested that quantum mechanics may be the basis of consciousness. That somehow there was a there was what's called a quantum coherence taking place inside certain molecules and proteins in the brain that some quantum weird behavior that triggers our consciousness. The basic premise being that quantum mechanics is mysterious and we don't really understand it. And consciousness is mysterious and we don't really understand it. Wouldn't it be great if the two were connected? It's, it's a bit like saying, um, Deep space is cold, empty, and meaningless. That's what entropy, the increase of entropy, the amount of disorder in the universe tells us that we'll end up in the future with a universe that's completely cold, empty, and meaningless. Well, so is George Osborne's smile. That doesn't mean he's thinking about the second law of thermodynamics. You don't have to make that association. But it does seem as though certain weird aspects of quantum mechanics do play a role in biology. It was first suggested by Erwin Schrödinger, the famous he of the cat in the box experiment, which by the way never actually took place, for those who are worried. Um, Schrödinger wrote a book in the mid-1940s called What is Life, in which he postulated that 
living cells might behave in a way that's rather different to similar uh, systems of similar complexity in the inanimate world. Namely that inside living cells you might get quantum behaviour in a way that you don't see in large objects in the real world. Remember I said quantum mechanics, the weirdness of quantum mechanics, tends to be constrained down to the, to the, the level of, of, of atoms and molecules. And once you get something very complex, made up of billions or trillions of atoms, you don't see this weirdness. It sort of leaks away. Schrodinger suggested it may not leak away, it may still have a, a, an important effect inside living cells. Not many people took his work, or his ideas, seriously. But of course he did suggest, for instance, that uh, inside um, living cells you might get the behaviour of something called an aperiodic crystal. Well, that, his work essentially inspired Crick and Watson to come up with the, the, uh, the model of DNA. The DNA molecule is essentially an aperiodic crystal. Here's a physicist and a biologist working together to understand fundamental structures of, of living matter. They weren't really using quantum mechanics. But in the early 60s, um, a Swedish physicist by the name of Per Olof Lauden published a paper in which he suggested the idea that quantum mechanics may explain how genetic mutations take place. He said that um, in DNA, we have the two strands of DNA wrapped together, double helix, and they're stuck together. They're, it's near like, like a twisted ladder. The rungs of the ladder, the, 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 the things that hold the strands together, are essentially hydrogen atoms. A hydrogen bond is what a chemist would call it. And these hydrogen bonds behave in a special way such that the hydrogen atom could sit on one or other side closer to one strand or the other. And it was the way that hydrogen atom moved, or could move from one side to the other, that was very strange. Because it did something called quantum tunneling. Now quantum tunneling is a mechanism described in quantum mechanics that takes place all the time, that's sort of halfway on the weirdness scale between the mundane Quantum mechanics explains how atoms and molecules all fit together, and quantum mechanics says atoms can be in two places at once, and, and, and so on. So what is quantum tunneling? Well, um, quantum tunneling is the reason we're here. It's the reason the sun shines. So link, this links in with to the other two science talks you've heard this evening. Tony Ryan talking about sunshine, Bob talking about energy from the atomic nucleus, the sun's energy is derived from thermonuclear fusion. Essentially, two hydrogen atoms, or the, the nuclei of two hydrogen atoms, namely two protons, getting close enough together to be able to stick. Now, there's a, there's a complicated several steps beyond that, but essentially this is what's happening. Two protons are getting close together to stick. But two protons both have positive electric charge, and so they will repel each other. Now there's another force that acts between two protons called the strong nuclear force, but it only acts if they get close enough together. When they are, then it's much more powerful than the repulsive force of their electrostatic charge. But they can't, under the norm, normal laws of mechanics get close enough together for the strong force to take over and stick them. The reason they can is entirely because of quantum mechanics, because quantum mechanics says these protons aren't like little balls or little magnets. Quantum mechanics says the protons are rather fuzzy, vague objects that aren't located in a particular position. It's possible that there's a small probability that they can somehow, their, their, their realities can overlap such that they're close enough together for them when they suddenly realize how close they are to stick together. The, the, the sort of 
common sense way of us thinking about it, it's as though one of the protons, the protons see this sort of invisible force shield that separates them, that keeps them apart. It's as though they, they say, well, there's this force field, I can't get through it to get close enough to the other one. I know I'll disappear from here and reappear on the other side of the force field and some of this stuff together. Or it's like a ball rolling up a hill. Now, you know if you kick a ball hard enough, you can get to the top of the hill and down the other side, but if you only kick it sort of hard enough for it to roll up to the middle of the slope, it will always roll down again. But if it was a quantum particle, it could get halfway up the hill, disappear, and reappear on the other side. It just sounds crazy. But that's how the sun shines. Quantum tunneling is in fact everywhere we look down at the level of atoms. And it turns out there's a strong chance it could be the mechanism that explains how certain types of genetic mutations take place. So that's, that's the, an area in, in biology that quantum mechanics appears to play uh, a role. There are lots of other areas, some more speculative than others, that are now suddenly becoming more, more interesting and more important. Mainly because the biologists are, are able to design very clever, very careful experiments to test some of the wacky ideas that the physicists are suggesting. So photosynthesis that you heard about from Tony Ryan earlier, there may be certain aspects of that process, the way light is captured efficient, efficiently by the molecules and the surface of the leaf, and the way that light energy is transferred down inside to be converted into useful energy, might utilize some of the weirder aspects of quantum mechanics. Namely, that energy flowing in different directions, or if it's carried by certain particles like electrons, taking each electron taking several parts at once, and then sort of figuring out which is the most efficient way of getting there. It's as though biology has, has hit upon quantum mechanics and utilized it and evolved to, you know, uh, because that's an efficient way of getting energy down from, from sunlight. Another example is possibly the way the sense of smell works. Some of these ideas are very, very complicated and very difficult to test. But it's physicists, quantum physicists who are, who've shown time and time again that the world of atoms and molecules is very weird, suddenly realizing that biologists can test whether those ideas play an important role in living systems. The people who really know these tricks are the guys sitting between the physicists and the biologists, and that's the chemists. Because there's a whole field called quantum chemistry, where they're using the rules of quantum mechanics to describe rather complicated processes in chemistry, in, in organic chemistry. And they're now realizing they can take those techniques and apply it in, in biology. This is an area I predict that although you know, it's it been suggested by um, people almost half a century ago, only now is it being taken seriously. I predict in the te next 10 years or so, it will move completely out of the realms of wacky speculation and will be one of the most exciting areas in, in uh, current scientific research. Thank you very much.